Good morning, and welcome to worship at Pleasant Hill Community Church, the United Church of Christ. It's great to see you here today. It's wonderful to welcome all of those who are joining us by Facebook. Uh, I am Pastor John, and it's my privilege to serve here, well, at least for about another hour, as the uh, interim minister, and to be able to say on behalf of this congregation, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Uh, God's children come in all shapes and sizes and colors and uh, uh, origins, and, and we know that, and we are so pleased that this is a place where we attempt to be as welcoming and opening as we know how, as inclusive as the love of God. So I'm glad you're here today. Do we have any guests that the members of our congregation would like to introduce today that you have brought with you or that you have met? Yes, ma'am. Hey, Cheryl. Well, thank you, Carol, and welcome, Cheryl. Yes, ma'am. My son is here with his spouse from Pennsylvania, Mrs. Glenn and Corrine. Very good. Thank you, and welcome. I am, oh, wow. I'm happy to introduce our son, Joel, who is, uh, he and his wife and son spent the night with us last night, and they're taking uh, Gabe to Middle Tennessee right after lunch to begin studies there. Uh, he's a freshman. Brand new year at oh, MTSU. Uh, That's great. From Louisville. Some of you may have seen because they brought right. these Presbyterian pastors. Some of you may have seen their program. Fantastic. <laughs> We're getting pretty good representation here today. I'm pleased to have, uh, she's kind of visiting, and I know some of you haven't yet met my wife, Sheila. I asked Sheila to stand. She's here and helped me get things packed up and cleaned up at Wood Lane yesterday. And my sister, Cindy, is here. Uh, she lives down in Oak Ridge and was able to drive over for today, so I'm awfully glad to have them. Good. Well, it is an exciting day today. Lots going on. Several of you saw our power of the penny uh, out back for, or out front for uh, the offering, and we'll hear about that soon. Thank you for your support for uh, that special offering. We're going to welcome five new members this morning to our congregation, and I'm grateful that they are here, and it's been a privilege to get to talk to them and to work with them. And thank you. Uh, there's going to be a little recognition, and I just wrote in my notes here, see ya, Pastor John. And uh, we'll look forward to sticking around for a few moments after worship and sharing a few words with you. And then Sheila and I are going to be heading. You can find our car because it's packed to the gills out there. Uh, and uh, we'll be heading out. Next week is the annual church picnic. We've had a good number of folks signing up for that. If you're going to, haven't had a chance to do that yet, please do. And Brenda Dotson here, she wanted to just give us a word about the picnic next week. Yes, indeed. Jeff and Brenda, thank you so much. And I truly regret, I'm not going to be here. I've been keying on that picnic for several weeks now. Uh, and it's going to be a great time, just as Brenda said. Come back. It's our sort of come back together here for a new year, a new fall. We believe COVID will be gone eventually. Uh, we'll still be careful, but I hope you'll come back and just enjoy this great time as well as a great number of other things that are going to be coming your way 
throughout the fall and throughout the, the rest of this year. I've been very grateful to work with so many good people. Diana Riggs has been a real delight to work with in our worship music, and she and our faithful choral support singers and the Chimers and the Tenuto Trio and all of those who have played. What a, what a great privilege we have. Betsy, uh, what a great privilege we have for church music here. Rich Nelson is serving as our liturgist today. My thanks to him and to all who fill that role. I believe that God is with us in this place today. So let's prepare to enter our service of worship. Please join me in the call to worship. We gather together to worship, knowing that God is already here among us, knowing that there is nothing that separates us from the presence of our Lord. Wherever we are, wherever we go, God is near. So let us enter into the service of worship with confidence and hope, knowing that God is already with us and that God stands eager to meet us and bless us with divine love. Amen. <laughs>
Let us join our hearts in prayer. Most wonderful God, foolish and flawed though we are, we too delight in your beloved Son. And in his name we gather in this house of many praises. May the heavens be opened for us that we may catch a glimpse of that light and love that transforms our common days with a beauty not of our making. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Well, it is indeed a, a great privilege to introduce the newest members of Pleasant Hill Community Church. Each of these, I've had the privilege to sit down with them, to talk with them, to get to know a bit more of their life story and of their faith story. And each of them has felt a distinct calling and drawing to come to be a part of the membership of Pleasant Hill Community Church. Now, one of our new members was not able to be with us physically today. Jane Hills has promised that she's watching uh, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, what's this thing called? The Facebook broadcast. Uh, or as she said, I'll be watching on TV. So, Jane, we welcome you today, and she's going to be taking uh, a part and making her commitment today. Of course, you know, Jane's been around a long time but never made her membership official, but she is doing so today. I'd like to ask these others to come and join me right here at the front. Tony Hicks has been with us now for a few weeks. Come on up here, Tony. Tony is a, a res longtime resident of the area. He's from Crossville and glad to have him. I'm glad to have Bob and Diane Osawicki to come. They live in Crossville as well and have moved to this area. They've been here a couple of years or so anyhow, and uh, they have been members of a Presbyterian Church over in Franklin area, Tennessee, and are coming uh, to us. And Carolyn Morris, come and join us, Carolyn, who comes from Wisconsin and has been very active, not only in her congregation, but in conference ministries uh, through the United Church of Christ there. And again, it has been a pleasure to get to know each of them. If you haven't had a chance to greet them, or if you've seen any of these folks around for the last few weeks, now you know they're new members. Please, since we're still a little COVID limited, uh, this is a very brief introduction. I hope maybe there will be a, a better time for fellowship later, but do all you can to make them feel welcome. Now, I would like to invite all of us to join together in this brief litany of membership. So be prepared when you have the response uh, inside the worship folder to join. Today, we welcome into our membership each of these persons that I have named. And together with our new members, I want to invite all in the membership of Pleasant Hill Community Church now to unite with the church in all times and places by confessing our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus the Christ? I believe in Jesus the Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. And now to our new members, I ask this question. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God, giving to God, and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world? The response is, I promise with God's help. I promise with God's help. And now I would like to ask the congreg congregation, as you are able, to please stand and let us join in expressing our welcome to these and to affirm our mutual ministry in the Pleasant Hill Community Church, United Church of Christ. We welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and our prayers as we share the hopes and labors 
of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of the Pleasant Hill Community Church, United Church of Christ, I welcome you and you, Jane, to this fellowship of love and rejoice in your membership within our congregation. And the congregation has permission to rejoice in any manner you see fit. Thank you all, and you can be seated. Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew chapter 3. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have, would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill, fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Thank you, Rich, and may God bless the reading and the hearing of God's holy word this day. It may seem just a little bit odd to you to have this story of Jesus' baptism as our main scripture right here in the middle of summer. We usually read it during the season of the Epiphany which comes a few weeks after Christmas. And it's usually the story we read at the start of Jesus' public ministry. And as we carry the story forward, it leads us into Lent and then to Easter. But I kind of have two reasons that I wanted to use it here today. My last official Sunday in the pulpit Oh, you know what? I wanted to at least once see what you all look like. <laughs> oh. Maybe I'll get to come back someday and preach from there when I've got everything back in place. But as being my last official Sunday as your interim pastor, um, the first reason is a little bit selfish, I will admit. This is just a great story. I, I love it. And it features not only Jesus himself, who's the very center of our faith, but it also includes my biblical namesake, John the Baptist. <laughs> but my second reason is more directed at all of us who care about the future of this congregation. The story of Jesus' baptism, just like our own, our own coming to faith. Maybe you were baptized into the church as an infant. Maybe you were baptized at some other point as a child or a teenager, or possibly even coming to your baptism like Jesus as an adult. Maybe you have yet to come and receive the gift of baptism. And if that's the case, I hope you'll consider it when your new pastor arrives. But just like our own stories, this story of Jesus' baptism is a sign of what is to come. It is the start of something big. I believe with all of my heart that what is to come for Pleasant Hill Community Church is something big, and something good. I believe that God's presence has endured 
through the ministry of this church since 1885. Now, I don't think we have any founding members here, do we? we? We've got a few that are closer, Al, and a few others of you, you know, hovering around the 100-year-old mark. But I know that God is not finished, either with this church or with the Pleasant Hill community. This promise of new members today and all of those who have yet to join here and perhaps be baptized here, that's the kind of sign of life that we need, isn't it? And I hope you will take it that way and feel a spark of enthusiasm and of joy to carry you forward into the future that God is planning. Will you do that? Will you say amen? amen? See, I told you I was kin to John the Baptist. <laughs> Just a little. But I believe that this story has some other important things for us to notice. John wanted to do everything right that day when Jesus came to him. And to tell the truth, did you notice John got a little bit fussy? with Jesus. Not that any of us ever get fussy in the church or fussy about the way things ought to be. That, that's okay. We, we need a little bit of that. Um, but John here was worried about getting everything right. And we certainly should always do the absolute best that we can, but it's easy sometimes to get caught up in the details, to be so worried about whether everything looks just right or if we speak just right or if every piece of equipment and furniture is in exactly the right place, we can get so caught up in those things that we forget to focus on what is most important. And that's the presence of God here among us and with us. There comes a point where the details just have to take care of themselves. When we've done all we can and we've done our best, we have to kind of just not worry about it anymore. Notice what Jesus said to John, who was protesting that the time might not be right or that they might not be doing everything just exactly perfectly. Jesus says, let it be. Let it be so now, for it is proper for us to fulfill all righteousness in this way. If I were paraphrasing Jesus, and I can almost feel him and see him and imagine him talking to his cousin. They'd probably met before. John is a second or third cousin to Jesus. And, and he said, John, it's okay. Just let it be. I appreciate your concern. I appreciate your preparation and your desire to be just right. But let's just move ahead. Go ahead and do things the way you normally do them. And in the way that you've got planned. And everything will be okay. Jesus urged John to let it be, and that's good advice. When we've planned our work, when we're ready to work our plan, there comes a time to let our worries and our fears go and just go ahead and do the best that we can. Like the promise I asked our new members to make today, our response is, I will, with God's help. And that is indeed the best effort we can make. So John baptized Jesus there at the Jordan River. And I love what happened next when Jesus came up out of that water. It's so cool that heaven was opened that day. And we all love the image of the, of the dove 
coming down as a symbol of the Spirit. We've seen it in artwork, and it's often in our sanctuaries, and we hear it in beautiful music. What a great image. But it is God's words that really stick with me. This is my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is my child, this is my son, and I love him. And I am well pleased with him. When we move ahead and act by faith and in obedience to the leading of God's Spirit, we too, all of us here on top of the pleasant hill on the Cumberland Plateau, we too are the beloved of God. And God is well pleased when we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for that's the very best way to be happy in Jesus when we trust and obey. Pleasant Hill, I baptize you today with the charge to love God, to love one another, to pray for each other, and work with each other. Everything else you do will fall into place when you do those things. Trust God and obey the Spirit's leading. Keep Jesus at the center of all that you believe and do, and just let it be, okay? As Fernando Tavares Sabino, who was a Brazilian writer and journalist, first wrote, all will be well in the end, and if all is not well, then it is not yet the end. <laughs> amen and amen. time in our service each week where we pause to pray for others, uh, to bring our own needs before God certainly, but to pray especially for those within our congregation, our community, our families, and our friends. And you will see on page seven the current uh, listings that we have in our office for our church prayer list. I have an addition today. I got a text early this morning that Sam Hahn uh, was taken to the ER last night, and I've been in touch with Shell uh, and uh, with Sam. I want to thank Rebecca Selkenbridge for sending the text this morning. Sam is still there. They don't have a diagnosis yet. She had some chest pain last night after the uh, production, and so pray for Sam. Shell is at home. Pray for her, and uh, we'll see how that goes for them this week. We are then praying also with Joan and Joe Giddings for their grandson Emmett. We join yeah, with many in praying for the people of Afghanistan, the people of Haiti, as they suffer through these crises affecting their countries. As I was praying this morning, I thought, Lord, I know that Afghanistan and Haiti aren't the only places in your world where your heart is breaking for people who are suffering. 
We're praying with Jeannie Elrod, with Esther Kurtz, with Dick Disler, Jean Clark, so good to see Jean this morning. Kathy Brown is here this morning, and so good to see you. We've been praying with you. Diana and Ron continuing with health concerns. Jeffrey Abbott is now at home taking physical therapy, and we continue to pray for Joyce Reese, who is in hospice at Wharton. I'm sure there are other needs in your mind and in your heart today. In a moment after I've prayed, we'll pause for a moment of silence. Let us know that God hears the prayers of our hearts and you're encouraged to lift those today. Most holy God, as we come today, we have named these our friends and family members, our members of our church, others in the community and in other places, and our hearts are concerned with those all around the world who suffer, particularly those who suffer due to the decisions of others. God, bring hope and sustenance, bring help. Help us in our efforts to pray, to give, to work, and to do all that we can in helping to meet the needs of your people here in our community and around the world. We pray for these who are dealing with illness. We're thankful for those who are coming through times of recovery. We're thankful for those that are able to be back in church with us here today after a time of recovery. Hear now the prayers of our hearts as your people lift them before you. As we say now together the Lord's Prayer and pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Mother and Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. of this congregation come here before God to offer our many gifts. The gift of preaching we receive each week. The gift of music and singing we enjoy listening to and participating in. The gift of our voices and our ears we use to communicate with others. The gift of our resources we provide to continue the work of the church. Let us make an offering to God of these many gifts, remembering Jesus' words. From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded.
God, use our offerings of money, time, and talents to enliven your church, to enhearten a world prone to discouragement, to enable a spreading of the love of Christ. May all our gifts and our giving be acceptable in your sight. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. January of this year, Pleasant Hill Community Church called Reverend Dr. John Fairless to serve as our interim pastor. And I do indeed thank Pleasant Hill Community Church, its members and friends, for the love and the kindness and the support that have been shown to me these last eight months. I'm grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. You express our gratitude for your time among us, your influence on our faith and faithfulness, for God gave us your departure. Do you offer your blessings and prayers for Pastor John as he leaves to receive treatment for his cancer in Florida? Oh God, we give thanks for Pastor John's leadership, enthusiasm, Come and join us. Are we having some refreshments out? Uh, 
on the patio. So come stick around for just a moment, and I look forward to seeing you there. May the path that Christ walks to bring justice upon the earth, to bring light to those who sit in darkness, to bring out those who live in bondage, and to bring new things to all creation. May this path run through our lives. May we be the road Christ takes. Amen. Thank you.